the journey, you know, starts with a very sad, tragic story of uh, our, our donor who lost a, a very close person in her life to road violence. This was a particularly um, terrible summer for road deaths. We had 46 people killed on the streets. We really wanted to highlight the importance of street design and making streets safer for people. The donor wanted to support us and fund us in, in taking some of that action here in Toronto. Very excited to be here in Toronto working on Canada's first ever Vision Zero pop-up. Our projects obviously need a ton of volunteers to help out and we have had amazing local partners on the ground. We want families to be able to live and work and enjoy the time in their neighborhood and 880s is imagining what that could look like all the time. Compared to the Danforth, on an ordinary day, of course, it's fantastically a thousand percent safer. Fewer accidents, the healthier the population, the better city we have. I like the decoration all over the, the streets and uh, the bike lane. You know, we're able to interact with a lot of the shops in the area, things for kids. This type of infrastructure will really bring people to the area, which will be very important for local business owners like myself. We really have a tangible experience, and that's important to inform that discussion, and frankly, for policymakers to help us get a better sense of what we're actually approving and the work that we're doing at City Hall. So if we start from that place that this is our vision together for our community, for our city, for our street, I think that's how we can, even the people who are most dug in, how we can get them to a place where they see the value and the benefit in age-friendly streets. We want to show a street that is alive, a street that prioritizes people, is a place to meet neighbors and friends, a street that isn't just absent of death. We learned so much uh, about the appetite for, for these types of interventions in our city and, and across Canada, I hope. <laughs>